Jenny Lausanne, Juno nominated singer songwriter, Gemini award winning puppeteer. Didn't know that, did you? Award winning screen actress, multi nominated stage actress, filmmaker. Pleasure to have you in the studio. You seem pretty chilled. Can I just start with that? Are you have you always been this laid back? No. No. So you've worked on it. I well, you know, it's kind of a little bit of an oxymoron to work at being chilled. So but, yeah. well said. Yeah. Um, Why I'm are just you so older. Ch- I'm, I'm just, older. I'm, I totally get it. I've passed the fifty <laughs> mark, man. It's like I don't have to work so hard. Exactly. I can actually just be and yeah, I just carried around a lot of baggage too for a while. And went, wow. One day I woke up and went, gee, that stuff's really heavy. That's heavy. Yeah, just gonna put that down. Yeah. But, wow, it's so much more enjoyable. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh. Well, welcome. Thank yeah. you for being here. And uh, as I got to know you a little bit uh, through doing a wee bit of research, the number th- one thing that got me the most excited about you being here. The puppeteering, I know. Yes, yes. Mr. Dress Up. I know, I know, I know. He was so awesome. He was such an awesome man. And his wife was fanta- equally fantastic. Ernie Coombs. Yep. There's a guy I wish I'd met. Yeah. Um, and who's the hilarious House of Frankenstein guy, Tim? Billy Van. Billy Van. I wish I'd met him as well. I wish I'd met the friendly giant. Yeah. Gord Downey. I'm not so sure I'd be kosher with meeting Mr. Rogers. He just kind of creeped me out a little bit. But you He know. was an equally wonderful guy, but Ernie was really special. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Like, he really he really walked the walk. Like, he, he was, you know, they genuinely loved children. And That's good. Yeah. And what a horrible yeah. story about the way his wife died, getting hit he, by a car on a sidewalk, I think, was the That was story. pretty hard, actually. We were taping that day, and uh, Ernie and his wife were uh, headed to the theater or the opera or something that evening, and okay. he had gone off and at lunch hour and bought these beautiful purple flowers. I remember them being purple. I don't know if they were, but... <laughs> And uh, and she never showed up, and and I remember we all sort of waited around for a while, and then and then I left, and then the next day I heard it was it was terrible, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and what did that do to him? Well, like, you know, he, he was must a, have he was changed a prof- after that. Well, no? he was a professional, though. I saw him in the studio, and I saw him in a work environment. So, um, and we had just finished the season, and so he he really had a time to. Um, do what he needed to do, and then the next time I saw him, he was uh, gung ho and back, being a, the professional. That sure, he was, but, sure. Um, but they were very close, and so I. Isn't it's, that nice? I mean, I think it changes everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you can't not be changed when something like that happens. Okay, well, let's get started with the awkward white guy questions. Okay. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way I dance. Um, <laughs> what I'm are a, you? I'm a, I am. A, the the walking example that we can all get along. <laughs> right. Okay. Good. Yep. Uh, so my mother was Scandinavian. She was Finnish and Swedish. Um, I think there was a bunch of other things in there too. My okay. father was Métis, so he was French, uh, Ojibwe, Cree. Um, yeah. Lots of lots of different mixtures, all in one beautiful package. I what, think. What did your father give to you, as far as the Métis stuff well, and the, and the really attitude and the thinking and the mindset and the, I mean, anything? Um, no, nothing actually. Um, so uh, it was a complicated time, um, a, as it has been for the last several hundred years in Canada, in terms of um, celebrating Indigenous identity, celebrating Indigenous culture. Um, my father went through a residential school system. Uh, all of that stuff was um, very discouraged, not allowed, or against the law. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it creates a very complex energy, and I, my father struggled with that a lot uh, all his life. Um, beautiful uh, piano player, beautiful uh, artist, but even struggled with that term- mm-hmm. in terms of creative expression. Like, is creative an ex- expression other than, you know, because he loved jazz, is that acceptable? Uh, he grew up Catholic, very Catholic. Um, are those creative expressions uh, sinful or not? He struggled with that a lot. Really? He really struggled with that a lot. And at one point, he just decided that he was going to stop painting, which broke my heart. Oh, yeah. was he forced Catholic? Well, I, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, his his parents were devout. I mean, it's very. It was. I mean, going w- way back. I mean, down back to the days of of Louis Riel and and uh, Métis Rebellion and the, like Catholicism was a was a foundation uh, of that belief system and mm. you know I- intermixed with uh, with First Nations cultural spirituality as well. But um, but. The Catholic Church was a was a very it was a, a stronghold in that community mm. and and that passed down for several generations. So, 
and very much a part of the school that my dad went to was was um, a boys' school that was uh, primarily looking to um, uh, put those boys into the seminary, which my dad ended up going to in Edmond until he ran away and then went to the Vancouver School of Art. <laughs> what a great story. I love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So good. Just realized that wasn't for him. But, you know, it was part of the culture. It was part of growing up. It was part of what was needed also to be adopted in order to uh, survive, you know. I mean, if cultural practices were outlawed, then you turned to the spiritual practice that was yeah. was being offered to yeah. you. Right? Um, well, this is a weird question before we get you to do your first song, but yep. Uh, when your death comes, how do you want to be remembered? Well, you know, it's it's interesting that you ask that because a very a very beautiful woman in the Indigenous community just passed away suddenly a few weeks ago. Her name was Kathy Elliott, and she was an incredible um, woman. Hmm. And we had a celebration of her life uh, just a few days ago, and the circles of people that came were unbelievable like the like the, the variety cr- the cross section of, of you know okay, yeah. Sheridan students in the musical theater department to you know a lot of people from the aboriginal community to uh, the french community like people from all over came and 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 uh, you know one of the things that i realized was that she was she was the pebble that had been thrown into the water and all of the different ripples had had gone out and all of mm. those circles had convened and come together and and it was really extraordinary. Just I mean I, I hope for the same. How do you? And well, I hope yeah, but it's a what? Big party so so what I hear you really saying is I want a lot of people to come to my funeral. Well, I hope it's a party. <laughs> I, and I don't. I I'm actually yeah. I should probably put that in my will. I I just I I think it's really important that it's a party yeah. and a celebration. Um, I mean I know grief is grief, but I think. It's a, it needs to be a celebration. So I'm going to sing a song that um, that I wrote a few years ago that was uh, is on my uh, third album. Uh, my third album was um, me just being really tired of the music industry and touring and, and trying to make a living. And I thought, you know, I just want to make an album of things that I want to do. So, um, so I made a song, uh, uh, an album of what I call contemporary... Uh, contemporary traditional flute and drum songs. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, this particular song was actually written a long time ago for a theater production called The Beavers, and um, it's a song uh, from the voice of Mother Earth. When I call, there's no answer. When I breathe, how is hurts me when I sing are you listening when I kiss you do you feel me someday you want me Someday you want me, I'll be gone. Someday you want me. Someday you want me, I'll be gone. I'm sore. My heart is weary. When you're lost, I am near you. When you're hungry, I will feed you. When you're bare, When you're lonely, I am in you. Someday you want me. Someday you want me, I'll be gone. Someday you want me. 
Someday you'll want me, I'll be gone. Someday you'll want me. Someday you'll want me, I'll be gone. Someday you'll want me. Someday you'll want me, I'll be gone. I'm so my heart is weary. Heal now, complete the circle. I'm so my heart is weary. Heal now, complete the circle. Powerful stuff, man. Powerful. Yeah. Jumping. Um, okay. Oh, man. So this is a nice segue into the question I asked before the song, which is, when you die, what do you think is going to happen to you? Um, well, I have been taught and told by the elders that I work with that um, being on the physical plane is a dream. And that, in fact, our, our, uh, the reason that we come here is to expand our, um, our non-physical uh, awareness and 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 knowledge, and so it's a it's a, it's a school. It's a place to come to go to school, and so I think I've learned some pretty awesome things this time around, <laughs> and I look forward to um, taking that knowledge back to uh, being my true self, which is on the spirit realm. So being your true self in the spirit realm yep. means. Reincarnation means floating, means coming back. Is I, what? What's well, next we call, for you? We there's a lot of teachings around um, star beings or uh, where our ancestors live, um, and I, it, you know it's hard to grasp because I, I don't think we have the logic to really really understand what that is, right? Uh, but um, but it uh, having lost my mother at a really young age. How, how old were you? <laughs> I was twelve. Okay, and, th- hold um, on, hold on. Yep. Yeah. That blows. Yeah, That's so... That's horrible. It was, it was, uh, it, I didn't, I mean, I'm still, I think I'm still sort of processing that, especially sure. since mother-daughter relationships are so important and so strong, sure. right? Um, but it, it, I asked a lot of these questions when, and my mother at the time was into what was like Edgar Casey and what was considered at the time to be occult, um, uh, and and you know, she had this bookcase that was just full of in, in cr- incredible books and incredible things. So I I uh, did a lot of thinking very early on on um, on what this was. But I've uh, managed to put those in with some of the teachings and the times that I've spent with the, spent with elders who have uh, taught me a lot. Mm. And um, and I look at death now as a celebration. And it's not that I look forward to it because I actually really enjoy my time here <laughs> and have way more things to do and a lot more to accomplish. But um, but it's not something that I fear anymore. Yeah, so you're not afraid of dying? No. At all? No. I hope it's just a pleasant one and not, and not too traumatic, <laughs> you know? Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, when it comes to... The, the spirituality of the Métis people, how would you best and succinctly describe that? Well, I think, you know, the, one of the things that makes that complicated again is that, um, you know, a lot of us are finding our way home, our way back, um, because uh, Métis culture is certainly connected to First Nations Indigenous culture, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, and it's a combination uh, I like to think of Métis people as bridges, but um, but I think fundamentally the most important thing is that connection to the earth, uh, the the understanding of the power of nature, and um, well, that sounds like paganism, right? Well, 
we were called pagans. Yeah. And, you know, that was when, when in first contact, that was certainly the perception of, uh, of our uh, spiritual beliefs and our, 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 way of, our way of working within community mm-hmm. was different. Um, and all of that was pegged as paganism. Yeah. So that certainly, it's interesting that certainly word, has been, um, that word has been attached. To yeah, and that word, in our culture at least, has had this sort of a negative vibe to it. Oh, pagan, oh, you're pagan. You know, you look, read the scriptures, you know, uh, especially in the New Testament, they were always picking on the pagans. Ooh, the pagans are bad people or whatever. But the pagans that I've met over the years, whether it be uh, Wiccans or, um, oh, I can't remember the rest of them, Druids or whoever, uh, really, they're just getting. They're just trying to get a little power back into their lives that somehow they lost, and they f- have found this strength by surrendering to the created, and then exploring the creator. Does that make any sense at all to you? Absolutely. One of, one of the things that I do know is that whatever you call it, whether it be spirit or ancestors or creator or God or whatever. If in your life practice, which certainly has been mine, that when I turn to spirit, I know that I am well taken care of. I have grandmothers, what I call grandmothers, who who help me, who guide me, who um, who help me fill myself with joy. Hmm. And really, uh, you know, if if that's the most important thing for me in my life, um, and it works for me, that's that's where I'm at. I I do believe though that there is incredible there is incredible knowledge. We have plant medicines. We have things that have um, that we still turn to. Now they're just in a different format, and you buy them at Chopper's Drug Mart. But the but the 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 medicinal aspects still go back to the plant that is uh, grown somewhere in the soil that we hopefully you know good soil that we have so yeah. it still always comes back to that seed of the tree it still always comes back to that Thank you. 